another year, another disaster on planet Earth. In the first five months of 2023, regional banks have faced a crisis due to the Federal Reserve hiking interest rates faster than the banks could keep up with. Today, I want to focus on two of those banks. Silicon Valley Bank was the 16th largest bank in the United States, with more than $200 billion in deposits in 2022. First Republic Bank was number 14. One served the venture-backed tech industry of Silicon Valley, and the other served wealthy Americans and businesses. Both of these banks were chartered in California. In this video, I'm going to explain in simple terms why Silicon Valley Bank and First Republic Bank failed so spectacularly. We'll also explore the history and role of the FDIC, as well as the part that short sellers played in this disaster. Before we dive in, let's get one thing straight. Bank runs. We're talking about bank runs. <laughs> what do you mean the bank is out of money? Insolvent? You only have enough cash for the next three customers! Hey, what? People hear that something is wrong with their bank or the system at large. They run to their local bank to withdraw as much of their money as they can, just to be safe, in case their bank fails. Historically, that would take a great deal of effort to actually stop what they were doing, to run to the bank, wait in line, and request their deposits back. No, just a second here. No, no, I, I don't have your money here. It's in Bill's house and, and, and Fred's house. Today, it takes a few seconds and a couple taps on their smartphone screen. A bank run can now unfold in the same amount of time it takes to get a Zoom call started. News also travels faster through those Palm devices. That's why, today, a bank can go from having hundreds of billions of dollars in deposits in the morning to being shut down by the evening. Bank runs. We're talking about bank runs. That's where we are in 2023. Let's dive into how we arrived here. During the pandemic of 2020, the Fed brought interest rates near 0%, and regional banks invested in long-term bonds at those low rates. However, as inflation grew, the Fed rapidly increased interest rates to bring it back down to their longer-term average of 2% annually. By 2023, the Fed had moved interest rates well beyond 4% which is at least four times more than in 2020. As the first quarter of the year neared its end, the market started to become aware of troubles in the banking sector. While banks usually benefit from higher interest rates because they can earn more profits from lending to people and businesses, the market would soon learn the hard way what can happen if a bank is not prepared for the shift from low to high rates. Over the span of weeks that felt like years, it would become clear to investors exactly why some regional banks were in trouble and how quickly a crisis can form among banks. The regional banking crisis had a profound impact on Silicon Valley Bank, a regional bank that catered to startups and venture capital firms in Silicon Valley. The bank's customer base was highly concentrated in the technology sector, which relied on venture capital as well as the public markets to finance their growth. However, with interest rates increasing, it became more expensive for startups to raise money from venture capital firms which in turn affected Silicon Valley Bank's customer base. The increasing interest rates also affected Silicon Valley Bank more than other regional banks because it invested heavily in long-term bonds when interest rates were low. As interest rates increased, the value of these bonds decreased, leading to significant losses for the bank. Furthermore, because the bank's customer base was highly concentrated in the technology sector, which is often a volatile industry, the bank was more vulnerable to economic downturns than other banks with more diversified customer bases. These factors combined to create a fragile banking system, which led to a run on Silicon Valley Bank, which ultimately did not survive. The bank run that led to SVB's failure was sparked by a letter from the bank's CEO, detailing a $1.8 billion loss on the sale of U.S. Treasuries and mortgage-backed securities, and a plan to raise $2.25 billion to shore up its finances. Venture capital firms, including Peter Thiel's Founders Fund, advised their startups to withdraw their funds from the bank. On Thursday, March 9th, the withdrawals amounted to $42 billion, leading to the bank's insolvency and takeover by regulators. By this time, the bank was in the negative by nearly $1 billion. The FDIC stepped in and took it into receivership on March 10, 2023. Less than two months later, on May 1, 2023, First Republic Bank was also shut down by the FDIC after short sellers manipulated their stock price to penny stock territory. This bank had too many uninsured deposits and too many assets that were now worth less as interest rates rose. Raising interest rates. Are we going to see rising rates? Rising interest rates.
We've heard a whole lot about the FDIC in these two short months. Let's talk about their role in this theater. The Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, or FDIC, is an independent U.S. government agency that provides insurance to depositors in case their bank fails. The FDIC was established in 1933 during the Great Depression to restore confidence in the banking system and protect depositors' funds. When a bank fails, the FDIC steps in and takes the bank into receivership. This means that the FDIC becomes the bank's receiver, takes control of the bank's assets, and makes decisions about how to resolve the bank's problems. Typically, the FDIC tries to sell the bank's assets and liabilities to another bank or financial institution. If no buyer is found, the FDIC may liquidate the bank's assets and pay off its creditors, including depositors. The FDIC is funded by insurance premiums paid by banks. Banks pay into the FDIC's insurance fund, and in return, the FDIC guarantees deposits up to a certain amount. The current limit is $250,000 per depositor, per insured bank. However, in the cases of Silicon Valley Bank and First Republic Bank, the FDIC guaranteed all customer deposits, regardless of the amount. This is because the FDIC had determined that it was in the best interest of depositors and the stability of the banking system to do so. The FDIC has the authority to provide full coverage when it deems it necessary to maintain public confidence in the banking system. Overall, the regional banking crisis has been caused by the Federal Reserve's rapid increase in interest rates, leading to a drawdown on deposits and a decrease in the value of long-term bonds and loan assets, ultimately causing two of the largest regional banks to fail. Of course, we shouldn't ignore the fact that these banks were poorly managed. Silicon Valley Bank's concentration in the technology sector and its heavy investment in long-term bonds made it particularly vulnerable to these effects. The FDIC played a critical role in ensuring that depositors were protected. The stability of the banking system has been maintained, so far. If short sellers have their way, there could be many more dominoes to fall before this is all over. That's all for today. You've been watching BullAcademy.org. If you enjoyed this, it's your sworn duty to hit the like button and subscribe for more. Comment your kind thoughts or put me on blast for something I got wrong, whichever makes you feel better. In the end, I love you for watching. Stay bullish, and I'll see you again in the next one.